So, unless you've been living under a rock, you'll know that UFC 298 is right around the corner. And honestly, guys, it's an amazing card. It's got great fights on it, particularly the main card. And today, I'm going to run through my predictions. I'm going to do only the main card today. However, before we get into the main card, which is just going to be in a second, I do just want to say, this fight here, Val Woodburn, Urban Elliott, it's going to be good and... I'm going with I'm going with Val Woodburn. I just wanted to say that because he's a big underdog and I think he is going to win. Um, Oban Elliott is okay, but the problem is he gets hit so much. And even though Val Woodburn is a can crusher, he has power. And Oban Elliott in his last fight on the Contender Series, he took an absolutely insane amount of damage against the guy. He got wobbled about five times in a minute and somehow survived. So he's very tough. So fair play. But that was only a few months ago. And it was a lot of damage to take early in your career. And, um, you know, he's his chin's basically... What I'm trying to say is I think he's taken so much damage already. It might have even cracked his chin. And Val Woodburn's got power. So all I'm trying to say for this fight is briefly, don't be surprised if Val Woodburn does find a finish on Oban Elliott. Because even though Oban Elliott is the better fighter, I think, he's open, he's sloppy. They both are sloppy. And Val Woodburn has got tough punches. So we'll just have to wait and see what happens there. Um, and obviously Val Woodburn's moving down the weight class for this. And he's made weight, which I didn't think he would. So uh, yeah, so he's in shape. Um, and he's going to have a size advantage over Oban. Because Val Woodburn is a pretty big dude for a while, right? But uh, yeah, moving on. Obviously, this is what you're here for. The main event. Sorry, not the main event, the main card. We're going to work our way. Opener for the main card is Anthony Fluffy Hernandez versus Roman Kopilov. And Anthony Hernandez is a big favourite here. It's because people are basically thinking that Anthony Hernandez is going to be able to take down and therefore beat Roman Kopilov. He'll basically gas Kopilov out. He might find a finish. He might just wet blanket him because Kopilov has looked bad in the past against grapplers, okay? So he's the favourite. And I was thinking that Hernandez was going to do that. He was going to win. But in the last day or two, I've started to doubt myself. And now I'm actually taking Roman Kopilov as the underdog to get the win. And I'm going to explain to you now that Roman Kopilov isn't actually that bad at defending takedowns. It's more the losses that look bad in themselves. And when you look at the losses, first of all, Duraev, the loss, he actually defended all of his takedowns. The only one that Duraev got off on him was one that he only got because the referee, um, it was Jason. Uh, Jason basically couldn't understand that Roman had no idea what he was saying to him because he doesn't speak any English because he's Russian. And he was basically trying to get them to reposition because he grabbed the fence like halfway through defending a takedown. And um, Roman didn't understand. So Darayev just got a free takedown off it. And then the ref just didn't intervene, which I thought was a bit weird because Roman clearly had no idea what he was talking about. A uh, bit strange there. but um, So that was the only takedown he got in that fight. And his takedowns have improved in the past. You can see he's getting better. And he's still young. He's only 32 in middleweight, which is young for a middleweight. And, you know, who's to say it hasn't improved anymore? Because I think he's improving. His striking's improving fight by fight. And his grappling has improved in the past from other fights. So it wouldn't be a ridiculous assumption that his grappling's also improved. And even if it hasn't, he's still got good enough takedown defense, I think. Okay, his ground game's poor, but I think his grappling is decent. And Hernandez is not a strong dude. I mean, he's called Fluffy, okay? That explains it. He's not very physical. Obviously, he's more of a pressure kind of guy where he's relent. He's relentless. He doesn't give up on the takedowns and he's going to rely on gassing out his opponents. But Kopilov, all right, he doesn't have God cardio. His cardio isn't bad per se. And the thing is, it's a free rounder. So that strategy is difficult already in a free rounder, as we know. But um, yeah, so Anthony Hernandez, he's so bad on the feet that I'm just thinking... Roman Kopilov will actually do good on the feet. Now, the only reason Roman Kopilov could actually underperform here on the feet is if he's petrified of the takedown. But I just don't think Kopilov's going to be that bad on the feet. I think he's going to be his usual calm self. He's going to he's gonna light up Hernandez. And I think he's going to either win a decision because uh, Hernandez's wrestling isn't going to work 
or he's going to knock out Hernandez because Hernandez's striking is significantly worse than his and also Kopilov is dangerous on the feet Hernandez has pillow punches so yeah that's what I wanted to say about that fight and I'm locking I'm choosing Roman Kopilov uh, I've changed my mind and he's who I'm picking it was initially Hernandez but I've realized that Kopilov isn't actually that bad at defending takedowns it's just questionable circumstances and also Hernandez he doesn't have mad power like he's not gonna blast double leg you know what I mean so yeah that's my prediction for that. Anyway, moving on, Marab versus Cejudo. Now, I'm picking Marab here. Most people are picking Marab. That's not some crazy pick. Um, people are saying it's a nightmare matchup for him. I agree. I think it is. It's to be fair. Who isn't? I'm not, who isn't Marab a nightmare matchup for? Just because his style is frustrating, you can't really get momentum because he'll interrupt it with a takedown. And his striking isn't so bad that you think, well, as long as I can keep on the feet for a few minutes, I'll catch him. Because his stand-up's just kind of annoyingly annoying in the fact that he doesn't really give you an inch. Um, he's very active because of his cardio. And this is a three-round fight, so I can imagine that he will push very hard because this guy doesn't gas out going full pace in five-rounders. So he can basically throw the kitchen sink at Henry and know that he will not gas. So Henry's in for a tough time. He's old. I think Henry Cejudo is actually 37 now, which for a bantamweight is basically a granddad. Um, and he hasn't looked amazing. So, yeah, Henry Cejudo, not very good pick in my opinion. Um, lost his last fight, obviously. And he's just not as good as he was. And also, he's at a size disadvantage here. And I know Henry usually is, but I just don't see him having enough like power to knock out Marab. And his striking isn't amazing. It's better than Marab's. But it's just not... I just don't think it's enough. And also, Marab will know how to beat Henry because Aljo has done it and they're training partners. They're best buddies. And if anything, Marab is better than Aljo, okay? I think Marab is definitely better than Aljo. He beat him in a fight. Um. So, yeah, I just can't discount the cardio, the fairly reliable chin, and... Although his stand-up is worse, it's awkward. And it's going to mean that Henry, granted, might not have to worry about defending takedowns because he's got good wrestling. But compared to, like, Jan and stuff, who don't have very good takedown defense, I just think that it's going to be annoying and Henry isn't going to have enough time to, like, land something big because Henry's not really that guy at Bantamweight. And he's not that much superior of a striker that he is going to, like, pick apart Marab on the feet. Uh, so we'll have to see what happens, but that's what I'm predicting. I think Marab will just win the decision, and he'll out-wrestle him. There'll be a few moments of striking, but it will be about a 70% wrestling match, and Marab will win. And I think hard, they'll barely get hurt. I just think it'll be quite a bad, boring fight. But, you know, that's kind of what happens when Marab wrestles, because it's kind of his style, which is a bit of a shame, but... I get it, he wants to win. If you've got a clear game plan, you may as well use it. If he mixed in some submission threats, if he got developed his jiu-jitsu a little bit, he'd be very, very scary. So I'd love to see him go down that route, but um, it seems for the time being, he's quite happy just double-legging people repeatedly until he wins a decision. So yeah, I mean, fair enough. Marab's the pick by decision. Um, I'm, I don't think Henry will win. I don't really see it. He's slightly better on the feet and on the ground, although he may be better than Marab because he's got that wrestling background. Marab's more relenting. He's younger, he's stronger, he's bigger. And um, Henry's at a downward spiral in his career. He's going like this, Marab's going like this. And um, RIP the Bantamweight division if Marab gets a title shot after this, which I anticipate he probably will because Sean O'Malley is not going to be Marab. And that's coming from a big Sean O'Malley fan. Okay, moving on. So, Jeff Neal versus Ian Machado Gary. Now, I this one's so 50-50 to me. Obviously, the odds makers don't think so. Machado, <laughs> why does it call him by his wife's name? Gary is um, the favourite here. But Gary leaves his chin high, has short reach for how big he is, which actually kind of puts him at a disadvantage. He's got a very weird build in that aspect. 
and he's chinny. The guy has a big head. He's quite easy to hit. He's been dropped by way worse strikers than Jeff Neal. Jeff Neal is a huge step up in competition. I know people are going to say, oh, well, not really, because Jeff Neal lost to Neil Magny, and look what he did to Neil Magny. Well, listen, if you weren't a fraud, you're going to beat Neil Magny, unlike Mike Malo. And um, Ian Gary isn't a bad fighter. He's very high level. He's good. He definitely belongs in the rankings. But Jeff Neal is a tough matchup for him. One of the toughest, I think. I think he's kind of chose quite a hard opponent for himself here just because of the fact he's a good boxer, which is probably, you know, Gary's weakest area of his stand-up. In a way, similar to Adesanya, is his actual boxing. It's kind of, it sounds counterintuitive, but it's true. And I kind of think that Gary thinks he's style bender and he kind of is him to a degree in the way they, they fight. But the only difference is Adesanya has long, long arms and Gary doesn't, which basically forces style changes. And Gary can't use those style changes properly. And he still tries to fight like he's got long arms. And that's why he gets caught and is vulnerable to getting caught on the inside. And I don't like it against a boxer like Neil. And I'm really not going to be surprised if Neil catches him. I'm debating picking Neil. I think I'm going to. Um, I don't know if he's going to win by knockout or he's going to just clip Gary and win rounds from big damage and like wobbling him and stuff. But Gary may be overlooking here. Um, this fight was meant to happen ages ago, but then I think Jeff Neal got injured. But, um, you know, Jeff Neal is still in his kind of his prime. I think he's not, he's only 33, he's not 34, 35. And it's at well to wait. So I don't really see age playing a factor here, even though Gary is much younger. And this is a big step up. So yeah, we'll see. Gary's been training with Oliveira. So if he shoots a takedown, it'll be interesting because on the ground, I think Gary is actually fairly good. I mean, there's not really a better person to train jiu-jitsu with than Oliveira. So in that regard, Neil will be in trouble on the ground. And I do fancy Gary's cardio to be better than Jeff Neal because we've seen ne Gary go three rounds and I know Neal does go three rounds often but Gary actually can go three hard rounds because his style he doesn't really throw super hard and the things he like relies on to get finishes usually his kicks as well which obviously they're much less gassing and throwing massive haymakers all day so yeah my pick is Jeff Neal to win this I wouldn't be surprised if he catches him in like the second round after Gary gets like basically too relaxed on the feet but he could just rack up uh, and win like a 10-8 round because he drops Gary and nearly finishes him because Gary's there to be hit on the inside and um, yeah we'll see but the leg kicks could be an issue for Neil definitely a path to victory for him and uh, yeah I think it's a great fight I'm definitely looking forward to it like I said earlier this is a great card moving on Paulo Costa versus Whitaker now Whitaker's a huge favourite, minus 240, minus 238, and Costa's a big underdog, which is surprising because Whitaker looked really poor in his last fight, and although he's still fairly young, I don't think he's ever going to be champion again, because I don't even think, I don't think he beats Drickis in a rematch, and I just don't think Robert Whitaker's actually that good, to be honest, like, yes, he's a Hall of Famer and he's a legend, but his wrestling isn't very good, and although his striking is good, his chin lets him down. He's Whitaker can't hang anymore with guys. If he has a brawl with any top level guy with power, he will lose every time, because the guy has no chin. Okay, bad chin. He's been exposed many times for it. Adesanya exposed it, and Adesanya doesn't have crazy power. And obviously, Drick is wobbled him with a jab, which is really worrying. And don't get me wrong, Paulo Costa looks more scary than he is on the feet. The guy isn't actually that much of a power puncher. You know, smoking Johnny Hendricks isn't that hard. But, um, you know, he still can hit hard. And it doesn't take much to finish Whitaker. And head kicks are there for Costa. Whitaker's short. And he's kind of there for the head kick. So wouldn't be surprised if he, we see a head kick finish. And... Yeah, he's Whitaker isn't a middleweight. Him moving to middleweight is so frustrating for me because the dude is clearly not a middleweight at all. He's shorter than me and he could easily make well or weight. I'm telling you, he used to fight there and he should have stayed there. I know he was champ at middleweight, but that was kind of like old gen middleweights. 
and they've got better recently. We have to give them credit. They still are a terrible division in general, but there is a few promising stars there. Um, one of the biggest like meme divisions, but um, yeah, I just I don't think Whitaker is that good anymore. He's cracked. He's took damage. Like I said, the head kicks there for Costa, the body kicks there. Whitaker's got like a really wide torso. Has anyone else noticed that? So it wouldn't be really hard to find the target. And he's undersized against Costa. Costa's a lot bigger than him, more physical. So, you know, granted, Whitaker is probably actually better in like the clinch. He's just going to be getting gassed because he's got this heavier, bigger dude leaning on him all the time. And I'm picking the underdog here because I'm not trusting Wicker ever again to beat anyone remotely decent. And Costa is remotely decent. He's fairly good. He fought for about about three years ago now. And all right, he looked terrible in that. But And he's never going to be champion, I don't think. But I think he he's in his prime. And I don't think Wicker is anymore. I think he had a really early prime, which would explain why he was champ when he was like 27, 26, 28. And um, yeah, just... Whitaker has seen his best days. He took a lot of damage. Uh, early start to his career, and I think he's going to have an early finish. And um, I think this will be another loss for Whitaker, probably. Um, surprised he's that much of a favourite when he's not reliable at all. And uh, if people are putting money on Whitaker, very risky in my opinion. Um, just primarily because the fact he has no chin. I don't like, I don't think anyone should be huge favourites when they have a lack of chin. Um, because even if they're way better than their opponent, they take one fairly decent punch, and they've you know they've lost a the round. They're doing the chicken dance, and if they haven't lost a the round, they're about they're gonna get finished. So yeah, don't like fighters with bad chins in big favorite odds. Never reliable, and uh, I'm not picking him to win this fight. I'm picking Paulo Costa. Give me a decision. I wouldn't be surprised. He Costa can go three rounds, or. Alternatively, give me a finish because let me tell you, Wicker ain't ain't that tough anymore. Uh, his chin lets him down. Moving on to the main event now. This is one we've all been waiting for. This is a really big fight. Alexander Volkanovski versus Ilya Tapuria. Now I'm just gonna go ahead and say it now. My pick is Volkanovski, and the reason being is that he's I think he's levels above Tapuria. Now Tapuria is good. But I just want to run us through some things here. So Volkanovski is coming off a KO loss. But it was the Makachev who is the best fighter in the UFC right now, really. It's probably, in my opinion, him him and Tom Aspinall, really. Um, you know, I don't think any heavyweight beats Tom Aspinall the same way. I don't think any lightweight or featherweight beats Makachev. Leon's got to be up there as well, to be fair. Uh, he's very... He's. I don't really think anyone's going to beat him in welterweight. Um, so yeah, I think those are the most secure champs right now. I mean, I, I know Tom Aspinall's technically not a champ, but I don't think he loses to anyone in that division. But um, yeah, so the loss to Makachev isn't too bad in my opinion because A, Makachev's way, way bigger than him. So the head kick's always going to be there. And, you know, losing to Makachev isn't that bad. And we know that Volk is about as good as Makachev because they had a very close first fight. So it's bad luck. He got caught whatever coming off the sofa you know not the best idea but hey ho you lo you win some you lose some and um yeah that's why this fight is so close if he had another close loss to makachev he'd be a huge favorite here okay i'm gonna tell you that now and here it says that volkanovsky is a favorite but the odds i've been looking at they're evens so it's a pick him and i'm picking volkanovsky because he's uses good fight iq He's got better wrestling than Tapura, and I know Tapura is a jiu-jitsu guy, but listen, Alexander Volkanovsky trains with Craig Jones, and Craig Jones is insanely talented in the realm of jiu-jitsu. There's not a better jiu-jitsu partner, you could say, except for Gordon Ryan, and uh, he's ill right now, so I wouldn't even count him. And um, yeah, so Volkanovsky is legit. His grappling, his wrestling is really good, really good. He's, I think he has a wrestling advantage over Tapuria, 100%. I think he's bigger than Tapuria. Uh, I think he's, like, stronger and bigger. Tapuria is a, isn't that big. The guy's skinny. Like, he's short and skinny. Like, this guy doesn't have a lot of muscle. He's lean. 
Uh, Volk is definitely the broader, like stronger dude. I think he's going to have the strength advantage in there. And all right, he might be slower now than Tapuria, but what I think it's going to come down to is Tapuria's got a bit of a boxing stance and Volkanovski's just going to chew his leg up. I think it's going to happen again and again and again. And also Volkanovski's probably going to wrestle Tapuria. Now, granted, Tapuria is dangerous in the first two rounds and Volk's going to have to be careful. But the way he can neglect that is he can chew the leg with his kicks, which I think he will win that leg battle. Or this is also, I think it's 50-50. He's just going to use a leg pick. He's either going to use a leg kick based attacking strategy where he goes basically volume, volume strikes with Tapuria using leg kicks in the hopes that he chews his leg up, immobilizes Tapuria, and then he can just basically put, put pressure on him and win a decision or go for a late finish. Now, the other strategy I see is he forgets that and he just wrestles him. And I think if he wrestles to Puri, he's going to win most of the time. I think that's his chance to success. I think it's the safest game plan. And I know to Puri has good jiu-jitsu, but in MMA, jiu-jitsu is kind of a strange one because even if you have good jiu-jitsu, you're basically, unlike in jiu-jitsu, you're losing the fight when you're in the bottom, okay? Because you have... The disadvantage in the fact that you can usually get punched in the face in bad positions where you can't hit back as effectively. And Volk's ground and pound is really high level. And also, Tapuria's cardio is a weakness, okay? Now, I know he's just gone he's just gone five rounds of Josh Emmett, but Josh Emmett didn't really... Tapuria could control when that fight happened in the sense that Josh Emmett would just dart in and he'd just move out of the way. So it wasn't very stamina gassing. And people were like, it was a war. It wasn't really, okay? Tapuria was never, like, forced into any crazy, like, volume. And he had time to recover and chill, and there was breaks in the action. However, Volk is not going to give him that time off. He's going to be completely foot on the gas in pressure. And Tapuria's cardio, for me, isn't very convincing. I think he will probably gas against Volk. So if this fight does go over two and a half, I think Tapura will decline in performance. And I don't think Volk will, because we've seen him time again. And I've your cardio, in my opinion, is one of your last things to go. And even if Volk is on a physical decline, uh, I think he will beat Tapuria. I think it's close. I wouldn't be surprised if Tapuria catches him in the first two rounds. That That's entirely possible. I'm not thinking like he's got no chance in hell. He has a very good chance. I, I understand the odds. But um, I'm picking Volkanovski to win this. I'm picking it by he's going to get a late TKO or he's going to win a decision with a grappling heavy game, game plan. Wear him out. And then once he's tired, I think he's just going to go for it on the feet or try and finish him on the ground. And I think it, both are very viable. But yeah, um, the wrestling is going to be too much. Tabura's jiu-jitsu isn't going to be as effective because Volkanovski's very good defending submissions um as we've seen a million times and he's only gonna have got better because he's tra he trains a lot with craig jones now so yeah and he's got jack della madalena in his camp and della madalena is a boxer so like pure boxing similar to tapuria uh so yeah the only thing he's got to watch out for is a surprise head kick uh believe it or not but yeah i'm back in volk to win this one and then retire i think that's what he's gonna do i think he this is his final fight i know he said 300 I'd be surprised because after this, to me, there doesn't really seem like a valid opponent for him. Um, I don't think he wants Makachev again. I don't think we should have that fight a third time. But um, yeah, I think Volk should retire after this. I'm sure he's made plenty of money and uh, he's probably got a career in acting because that, that old man character is so cool. Huge fan of that. I thought that press conference idea was epic and it was actually really annoying to Buria. Uh, I was surprised. He's very easy to wind up. And uh, yeah, I think Tapuri is maybe a bit too just frail for Volk. I think Volk is going to have a strength strength advantage. I think people are going to be surprised. And I think Tapuri is maybe overlooking Volk in the sense that I think he thinks he's washed. Now he's been knocked out by Makachev. But we know that if Makachev fought Tapuri, it would be, um, it would be, it would be an, an annihilation. Okay, Makachev would sweep the floor with Tapuria. He would annihilate him within the first two rounds. He'd easily get a finish, whichever way he wanted. He could take him down and uh, beat him up, 
or he could just probably school him on the feet because Makachev's very good. So I'm not looking too much into that loss. Uh, but yeah, thank you guys so much for watching. I'm back. I'll probably be doing some live streams in the near future. Um, I do do jujitsu. If you want to see some jujitsu content, just let me know. Uh, we've got some very talented guys in the gym that I work at. Um, some very high level dudes. So um, yeah, they'd be. Uh, I'm sure some of them would be down to get in some videos and show some techniques or just rolling or funny moments, whatever. Uh, but let me guys know and uh, leave a like if you enjoyed the video. Subscribe so you don't miss any future content. And yeah, I'll see you guys in the next.